Hello ladies and gentlemen on YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Animate Orange, where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it. Today, I'm going to show you how I built Soundwave, one of the Transformers Legends models from Metal Earth. This is my second Transformers Legends model. I've built quite a few other Legends models. Transformers are a little bit different, a lot like Guardians of the Galaxy, but with some extra detail. If you look at the back of the packaging, you will notice that the little scale is right about medium, almost. So these Legends, these Transformer Legends models are a little bit more difficult than the previous Legends models, but let's slide over to the table, open up this package, see what's inside, talk about some tools, and put it together. Let's open up Soundwave. A little tap to get everything to the bottom. Let's see what's inside this slightly more difficult Legends model. And just like before, we have two metal sheets, one and a half, I should say. Put that to the side and look over the instructions. If we open these up, see that they are blank on the back, very tall on the front. I'm going to fold them in half so that I can more easily fit them in the camera view. This is your first time or you're still fairly new at doing these models. I'll go over the instructions fairly quickly to give you an idea of what's going on. You start off at the top left corner and what they've labeled is page one. You've got the Metal Earth and Legends logo, line drawing of the model and the sheet, and then another line drawing of the two sheets, and I'll just grab the small one as an example. So you can see this is an outline of this particular sheet with all the parts labeled and numbered. You'll also note that some of the parts are colored in, and many of the parts are not. The ones that are colored in the same color are the same part. For instance, we have eight pointing at this big green section here. This green piece is also part eight. They're the same part, probably used the same on both sides. It's very common. I like that they do that now because it makes it a little easier finding those particular parts. Below that we have a sample part with a notation on the fold lines, which are basically pre-scored areas where things fold, and insertion holes and insertion tabs. Insertion tabs go into insertion holes. Over here we have the legend. When you see a blue circle next to a connection point, that means to insert a tab, fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert a tab, twist it 90 degrees. The twisted tabs are usually stronger, but not as clean looking. The folded tabs are cleaner and usually used on the outside of parts, but there are always exceptions. If you want to see a completed model for reference, you can either scan this QR code with your phone or tablet or what have you, or just go to this web address to see a completed model for reference, and then some notations about or warning about avoiding injury with some of the sharp parts because sometimes you get pointed areas that can kind of poke you a little bit but as many models as I've built I have shed blood but not many times maybe three or four times below that we have the start of the assembly flowchart starting with part one and you see here it's all folded up you've got the red section highlighted so that you can see where that red section is after it's folded and then we have part two and you see that they come together right here with a green triangle for connection point so those tabs are twisted and then we have part three and a little sub assembly up here and you show see how this part the red indicates the sides fold and then the red here indicates that those sections fold and then it folds all the way over clips shut over a tab and that tab folds over and you end up with that and this part comes together after you folded part two section down here down that way you slide over here and this number three assembly connects with twisted tabs and you end up with that there's a blue circle and some arrows indicating that this part folds in and also gets connected with folded over tabs and you end up with that and that's the gist of it when you get done with this section right here we jump over to this bottom or top right corner to page two and pick up where we left off with four five six Basically just fold, shape, and connect the parts, follow the arrows and the sub-assemblies, and start putting the parts together. And you get halfway down, remember this is folded over, we jump down to the bottom left quarter for page three, continue on, and then jump over to page four to finish up. And once you get to the bottom, you are done with your model. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're going to need is a pair of tweezers and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are gonna help you get the pieces out of the sheets 
cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces and then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping round shapes you'll find that I frequently use tools like this. These are 3D printed tools that I designed and printed for making round shapes and cone shapes. But you can use things around the house like pens, pencils, maybe large sewing or crafting needles. You can pick up some dowel rods at a craft store or hardware store or an inexpensive drill bit set from the discount bin and use the flat ends to do your shaping. And with the dowel rod you can sharpen one in with a pencil sharpener and that will give you some cone shaping as well. We talked a little bit about some tools. I've got some basics to get me started. Our two metal sheets in the instructions at the ready. Let's put this together. This octagon piece is supposed to hang off at an angle. If it's straight up, then you probably have it on backwards. I didn't realize it until later, but I clipped out and used part 13 instead of part 4. Part 13 is the same as part 4, but meant for the other side. In the end, however, the model worked out just fine with the parts mixed up. Be sure to pay attention to how things are oriented in the assembly flowchart to ensure you are attaching things correctly.
I followed the instructions and followed all the little flaps at a small angle before bending the sides around square. In hindsight, I think it would have been better to fold the sides around square and then bend the flaps in, which is what I'm going to do with the next arm. I have a habit of using a size as a guide to fold angled areas, like I'm doing here. I opened this part up a little so I could fold it around the tabs.
This time I am folding the sides around before bending the flaps at an angle. This way I know exactly how much I need to bend them. My hand was trying to cramp up at this point. The legs on Soundwave fold very much like the Guardians of the Galaxy models. There are a couple of extra details on this model, but not as many as the Megatron model.
The instructions are a bit vague about this part that looks like a wheel. Looks like it should have been curved and then folded over at 90 degrees on both sides. You might notice something is off. 
I'm putting the head and arms on backwards. I'll realize that in a moment and have a little laugh at myself. Time to pull it apart and try again. The tabs at the front being at a slight angle, it's a bit difficult to get the slots over those tabs, but be patient and keep working at it. <laughs> 